Hey, the little kids, it is I, the Moo Howard, and I am back. This chair actually sucks, so you know what? I'm not going to touch it anymore. But today, you saw the title. We got a very, a very important video to talk about. Well, I'm not talking about a video, but you get what I'm saying. So, I'm going to start by saying I apologize for not having uploaded for seven months. I was, uh, I had to go deeper in hiding because people were getting suspicious. So, uh, I had to be on the down low. And, uh, but yeah, now I think, uh, I think I'm off their tail now. So I should be good to go. But uh, if it happens again, you know what happens. I mean, apparently it's uh, unlawful to not pay taxes and pretend you're dead. Like, apparently that's a big problem. Well, well, all I have to say that is, I feel pretty dead inside, so, I don't know. What do they know? They know nothing, but anyway, enough about me, and more about something I want to reveal, which I guess is about me too, but uh, we'll get to that. I'm sure you folks have heard of a, a man, a mysterious man who called himself Dan Cooper. I got an itchy nose, damn it. Okay, sorry. Uh, Dan Cooper. Who is now goes by the name E. Cooper because the news reporters don't know how to give up proper information and gave the wrong name, but that's besides the point. Anyway, so D.B. Cooper, as you know, hijacked a plane in Washington, demanded two hundred thousand dollars cash, and said he had a bomb in a briefcase that he, would, that he would detonate if he didn't get that money. And he also requested four parachutes: two front, two back. So he got his requests. What the pastors thought the plane when they landed in Wash in uh I think Washington, they demanded that they fly to Mexico and and then refuel Reno on the way. So they took off. It was him and the flight crew on the plane. Then during the flight, he decides to take the money and two of the parachutes over the ash stairs in the back of the plane and jumps out. He was never seen or heard from again, and to this day, nobody knows who he was until today. Because as you saw in the thumbnail and in the title of this video, that is what the secret is. You want to know who D.B. Cooper is? You're looking at him right here. I mean, all you see there's that much. He put the olive complexion skin and the and the brown hair. Now, uh, let me tell you what was going on. Let me tell you the real story of uh, why I did what I did before you go saying, Oh, he's a liar. He's crazy. How could he have done this? There's no way. There's no way he is D.B. Cooper. That's just impossible. Well, I'm about to blow your mind. So, it was 1971, uh, where he was uh, not doing too well, but he was still around. I still visit him in California from time to time. And uh, my wife and I decided to take a, a vacation to Seattle to visit the family we had up there in Seattle in 71. So, we were there for Thanksgiving. We were preparing to eat. But then she realized that she had lost her one-of-a-kind diamond earrings. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, how could you lose those, Helen? How could you lose those? I was, oh, I was so mad. So then what ended up happening was, is that we ended up walking around the stores, and the only pair left in the world, according to what we learned, was $200,000. And she wouldn't shut up. She wasn't going to let it go. She wanted these earrings. So she said she was going to... Start like killing yourself and stuff. Like, don't do that, honey. I'll get you the money. So that I came up with the brilliant idea because I'm a genius, obviously. To hijack a plane and demand they give me the money. It was all part of my plan. So I got I bought a ticket under the name Dan Cooper because as everybody else suspected, I'm a big fan of that comic book, Dan Cooper. I thought that was interesting. We even had a couple of skydiving stooge shorts, but that's neither here nor there. So I decided to use that as my epithet, if you will. And that's when I asked for the money. I said, give me the money and give me the parachutes or everybody dies. I had to make them know what to know was serious. And so I opened a bomb and uh, there was a bunch of flashing lights and a, and, uh, a well, what's like a bomb. It was a toy bomb covered in Christmas lights. I can't believe they fell for that. <laughs> it was hilarious. The fact that they fell for that. It was dark in there, to be fair. It was kind of hard to see it, but uh, yeah, that that was me. I actually did that. So they, they, they were global. They fell for it. They gave me the stuff I wanted. I let everybody off except for the flight crew. I said, take me to Mexico. I need a vacation. So uh, we began to go on the flight. And on the way there, they weren't, they weren't. I asked to lower the stairs before we left to keep them lowered. They said, no. So that pissed me off. I got mad. 
But uh, anyway, so as we left, I uh, decided I had enough at this point. They were flying poorly. I think I didn't think our fuel. Sorry about that. I had to start her to like. I didn't think the fuel was gonna make it to Reno. I thought we were gonna crash before that anyway, and we were all gonna die anyway. So that's why I decided to take it upon myself as uh, I guess you're crossing the border of the state. I didn't know that at the time, but now I do. I decided to lower the asters myself because apparently you do that back then on planes, but uh, I don't know. And that's why I decided to jump, and I survived. I mean, yeah, it was cold and rainy, but I've done a lot of stunts in my student shorts or right into skydiving and such, and I was completely fine. So, yeah, that was it. Now you probably have some questions. Like, where did the money go? I paid for the ring. But, but, you're probably asking yourself then, what, what, what happened? What, why did the family that was on vacation in Washington find that money that was preferred to be yours? Well, there's a reasonable explanation for that, folks. I planted that money to throw them off my trail. That's what I did. It was genius. And uh, another question you're probably asking is, uh, well, your hair was white in 1971, so why was it black when you were D.B. Cooper? Well, there's a very similar explanation. I dyed it briefly, and I had some skit, I had some work done to make myself look younger, so they didn't think it was me. But uh, definitely one of my proudest moments. And then, as was only knew they were after us, so we decided to uh, move to Chicago. And uh, I in 1986, I finally got myself a job at WGN. But uh, apparently, I was breaking everything, and they weren't appreciating what I was doing. So then I decided the next year. To put on a Max Headroom mask and hijack WGN and WTCW. Yeah, that was me too, but uh, I'll talk more about that one in another video. <laughs> but the more important fact here is that the Mo Howard and DB Cooper are one and the same. If you have any other questions, just ask. And DM me on Twitter and Instagram. Both my usernames there are the Mo Howard. So look forward to hearing from you guys. Take care.